In this module, we'll be reviewing femur x-rays. This includes the AP and lateral views. For the AP femur, we'll be utilizing the uh, table bucky with the grid. will be 40 inches away from the bucky. Your camera should lock in place. Make sure you lock it in place longitudinally as well as width-wise and height-wise so that you, your examination will go on without a hitch. When you get the patient on the table, have them lie down. You're going to want to get the entire portion of their upper leg. This includes all the way from their hip down to their knee. There are no exceptions. If you get the shaft of their femur and you don't see either joint, that's not a good film. It's not acceptable. They'll kick it back. So first and foremost, if the person is a decent size, I mean a, a mid-size or smaller, you can center your crosshairs on the mid-shaft of the femur and there's a good chance you may be able to get both ends of the femur, including which means the hip joint and the knee joint. But notice how I wrote, you, you always must obtain both ends of the femur in order for the physician to evaluate it properly. So while they're laying down, you wanna make sure their toes are pointed upward and slightly inward. So they're in perfect posi position for this femur. This again is the AP. So if we're going to center this, then we're ready to uh, shoot the x-ray at 12 mass at 75 kvp. Now, as you'll see in just a minute, if we're evaluating the AP views, if the person is just entirely too tall and it doesn't look like you can get all the anatomy on there, it is perfectly acceptable to bring uh, your patient downward, center your camera a little higher, and divide this up into two films. Some of you may prefer that from the get-go and just do each and every film, each and every femur with two views of each view. So, whereas if you're gonna get a two view femur and you're thinking that's two films, that might end up being four films. You get a high femur and a low femur and then you do a lateral shot, high femur and low femur and there you go. So, it's all acceptable so long as you get uh, the, in, the femur in its entirety, whether you've got two films combined together or not. Here's a, a perfect examination of a beautiful femur, but the technologist opted to include the hip joint, which is, is close. This must be a tall patient uh, because you can't even see the knee, uh, the, the widening of the knee as it gets down here and we're relatively close to our threshold here. But this is what you want. I mean, the femur has uh, a femoral head that fits right into the pelvis. You want to make absolutely certain that you cover this area. I mean, the, you, the, a femur is not acceptable if you don't at least include this joint here so that you've got the, the femoral head in its entirety. This is the uh, surgical neck of the femur. This is where most of your fractures are going to occur, right here. And then, of course, you, you've got your trochanters uh, your greater trochanter, your lesser trochanter, these are little protuberances. This is what indicates to you that you've got a good AP. Remember when I told you the patient's laying on their back and you have your toes rotated inward? This is what happens when they rotate their, their, their toes inward. You bring out that tubercle and this is in perfect profile. So you've done a good job in rotating that foot if this is what you see uh, with your x-ray film. And of course, now we reach down to the, dig uh, the distal portion of the femur. You get the condyles on here. We see the patella, but we've got the knee joint in here. Not an x-ray of a knee, but we've got the knee joint included. As you'll see later, some folks end up with an image like this if they center too high on the knee joint. And sometimes that's easy to do. But back to the topic of the femur, make sure that you include the femur in its entirety, whether it's with one film or two. Now for the lateral femur, again, we're working with the table bucky locked in place at 40 inches. The crosshairs are on mid shaft on a middle sized person. You can divide this in two. Make sure your toes are parallel with the table. Your knee is parallel with the table. You can bend your knee if need be. In fact, that'll probably make it easier to get a lateral image of the femur. Make sure you always include both on the AP and the lateral, both ends, the knee joint and the hip joint. If you need to, this may be necessary. This is a technique that allows the patient uh, a little bit more comfort comfortability and allows you to be able to more perfectly position the patient for a lateral film 
Some folks have a tough time uh, putting their top leg over their bottom leg, getting their calf muscle out of the way so that you can have access and position their uh, affected uh, leg. So if this helps you, I, I do every one of my femurs and knees in this format here simply because the patient tends to get in a very good position. But if they're not able to, you can always default to the original position here. A good technique for this examination would be 12 mass at 75 kbp. This can be a challenge, just so you'll know, because you have a significant difference in thickness in many patients from the, uh, ranging from the hip joint area down to the knee. So a 12 mass 75 kbp is a shot in the dark because there is a lot of tissue differences on, on a number of patients. Here's a good example of a lateral uh, tib fib. This is actually a very good shot because we, we almost see the knee in its entirety, not quite, but almost. And you've got the lateral knee, uh, the lateral hip included here up into the knee joint. That's a zipper there. The, uh, the technologist should probably have made sure that that was uh, more completely out of the way. But besides the point, we've got the, uh, the femur in its entirety, except for the most distal port. So what you can do is add a portion of the knee onto the examination, and now you have a complete study that has the distal portion of the femur and the knee joint itself. These are examples of burned out areas. Uh, more, more challenging, you're gonna run into more, uh, more of this than you will this. So simply because the tissue gets real thick up in here, you're trying to get a good knee and not burn the knee out, but then it, you, you're not using enough technique to see the bone joint up into the tissue. The, you, have, you cannot make this an exception. If, even if you include the area where the hip is, you have to be able to visualize it close to, to, to this here in the center. So even though you have all the anatomy on the film, this is a repeat film because you have to be able to see the bone Hence, that's what we're looking at. And again, here's a burned out area here on the upper left hand corner, a burned out uh, image, which does not allow you to see that joint completely and does not allow you to see the bone patterns to determine if there's a hairline fracture or something of that nature. This concludes our study on the uh, uh, and, uh, and your AP and lateral tip fib films.